Terrorism has been a threat not only to India's democracy but countries worldwide, affecting almost every sphere, every aspect of human life. Namaskar, Jai Hind. And in Sambar today, we have Dr. Adil Rashid, Research Fellow and Coordinator, Counter Terrorism Center, Manohar Parikar Institute of Strategic Studies and Analysis. And as expected, we are going to discuss terrorism, counter terrorism, and extremism around the world. Welcome to Sambar, uh, Dr. Rashid. Uh, it's a real honor. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, to start off with, uh, uh, Dr. Rashid, what we have seen around the world that the ma- and the mass terror attacks have been on the wane and terrorism has, seems to be shifting towards the lone wolf attacks. So how do you see this trans- transition? Is it a permanent sort of a shift or it's a sh- just a short-term transition in terrorism? Yes, it is uh, very difficult to uh, call out whether uh, this is an end to uh, major uh, big-time terrorist operations uh, or it has become a trend to move towards what people, experts say, violent extremism as opposed to terrorism. Uh, there is a very fine line which uh, perhaps distinguishes this kind of, a, we come up with new categories and new terminologies, but uh, uh, the last major terrorist attack uh, was perhaps uh, the one which uh, uh, Sri Lanka unfortunately experienced in 2019, the Easter bombings. And since then, although there have been uh, bomb blasts uh, in various places in Afghanistan and other places, but a major international terrorist attack uh, of the sort of the 9-11 and later uh, London bombings, uh, perhaps the last of that we saw in Sri Lanka in 2019. And uh, uh, perhaps we could say that that fascination of the uh, global terrorist organizations with the West of trying to impress upon them that they are a major threat. And so the fascination to carry out major sophisticated terrorist attacks with uh, some kind of a messaging, the non-verbal messaging in every terrorist attack, uh, that has uh, now, it seems, uh, gone a little out of relevance. Uh, You saw in the 9-11 attacks that perhaps the message uh, was being sent out that uh, even a small scale terrorist organization can hit uh, very vital sectors of a superpower like America and also the center of gravity, which it had found to be uh, economic uh, along with the military. So that was uh, an, an a more Hollywood-like attack, a uh, spectacular attack at that uh, kind. Even the Easter bombings, the messaging was uh, in a very sick way that uh, uh, ISIS, which was somehow uh, its headquarters were eliminated from Syria uh, and Iraq, uh, around uh, the beginning of 2019 with the Babus, the last uh, um, uh, outlet of uh, the headquarters of ISIS being eliminated, that uh, the April 2019 bombings on Easter was a very sick kind of a joke that uh, a terrorist organization has also resurrected. So there was always a kind of a subtext uh, uh, which was made with very large scale attacks and it was more sophisticated. It had many, many ways in which you could dissect a major terrorist attack. I think uh, that kind of a major operation uh, is losing relevance, And uh, but it is not a very uh, comforting thing. It is a very disconcerting thing. Why? Because now the shift has uh, is perhaps appears to be taking away from major terrorist organizations trying to make a statement to the vitriolic and hate-filled messages of those terrorist organizations percolating into the mainstream society and uh, the fact that the terrorist organizations have been able to somehow mainstream many of their extremist views through social media, through uh, different media outlets, uh, media outlets also around the world. These times uh, they have become very divisive in the way they communicate things. And so uh, we find very polarized societies, even in the West uh, today, and uh, and the general discourse is becoming very polarized and hateful. So in that, what were considered to be at that time, about 20 years back, a very extremist ideas, now they are becoming increasingly mainstream and people now even talk about it very openly. And this has created a new kind of a phenomenon where uh, the common man 
sometimes uh, uh, takes laws into uh, his or her own hands and uh, and you find more and more of these acerbic uh, uh, attacks uh, done by uh, you may call them lone wolves or just a few operators who get provoked by supposedly provoked by any uh, kind of a happening and they indulge in uh, very violent activities so uh, this is what uh, uh, a person abu musab al suri uh, a former al qaeda uh, 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 terror ideologue had said that we should move towards nizam la tanzim a kind of a anarchic and disorganized uh, 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 movement of uh, terrorism where a lone wolf operators a person with a car uh, running over people uh, uh, you know stabbings and knife uh, incidents happening this should become the norm and the big terror organizations will always uh, uh, claim that uh, this person did it on their bidding although anybody is free to do it's a free for all and this is in fact to me more disconcerting and more anarchic than uh, those regular uh, uh, major terrorist attacks i think uh, so so we are moving away from acts which were meant to create terror globally through the media to uh, society itself being uh, getting increasingly affected by uh, vitriolic hate filled uh, uh, lone wolf operators acting independently which is very difficult to uh, either find out or or foil or stop and so we are moving away from terrorism to violent extremism uh, of a very uh, vicious kind Dr. Rashid, you are talking of uh, mainstreaming of terrorism and uh, the violent hate, hate, acerbic speeches coming out of different groups and moving towards the lone wolf terror attacks. But what has not moved towards the lone wolf sort of a thing is the Taliban. And with its geo, uh, geo strategic positioning, different government organizations are gradually moving towards negotiating and talking to the Taliban. So, do you see a legitimization of terrorism? a mainstreaming of terrorism while recognizing the taliban i mean they have not changed their ways they're still the sort of fountain head of uh, terrorism in the region at least if i can say so yes this is a very disturbing phenomena because uh, uh, we are finding the increasing uh, kind of a normalization of uh, relations with the former uh, violent uh, extremist and terrorist groups uh, this is happening uh not just with the taliban with other groups also i mean you are finding uh, russia uh, in a way uh, trying to use former muslim chechen groups uh, in uh, ramzan kadyrov uh, using sending his jihadi fighters to fight on behalf of russia in ukraine you find uh, turkey using hayat tehrir al sham jihadists sending them to azerbaijan and then sending them to ukraine to fight against the russian jihadis so there is a a very free wheeling kind of a open dealing with the with uh, 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 former jihadist groups as if they are mercenaries you also find a a, a group like uh, al malhamal tactical uh, which is a, a a gun for hire kind of an organization you just dial them up and they will be at your service so this kind of a very you know, and you find that the taliban first having direct talks with america which was at that time also uh, the top of the list of all the terrorist organizations having talks with america in doha you may not be having formal uh, recognition but this is a tantamount to being uh, like negotiating with it's it's giving a kind of a recognition to a to an extremist violent group and then even after that today you find the interior minister on the on on the fbi list there is a there's a war uh, there's a booty on his head and still he is the acting interior minister of taliban they are also attending many of the uh, major uh, meetings in uh, central asia their ministers are going so for all intents and purposes the uh, 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 chinese foreign minister meeting taliban people openly and all that this is a very disturbing phenomenon you also find that uh, uh, uh i think we can discuss it uh, uh, in greater detail but uh, this is a a, a very uh, a new development and perhaps this is also one of the reasons why major terrorist attacks are not happening because these terrorist organizations now have territory 
and now they have we are moving away from non state actors to almost semi uh, proto state actors uh, and so the, the, they are behaving uh, in a more uh, 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 so so they don't need to carry out these uh, smaller attacks they they can have uh, a more vicious uh, uh, impact on society by becoming uh, uh, semi state actors in a way talking of russia Russia brutally crushed the jihad in Chechnya, not very not very long back. Now you say the Russians are sending the jihadi fighters into Ukraine to fight the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians, on the other hand, are using jihadi fighters of their own. You you just spoke of guns on hire of the jihad industry. So how does the jihad industry actually work? Can you give us a very brief sneak peek into the mindset of the jihad industry? yeah i think uh, the the idea is that uh, um these people are basically bandits they use uh, islam and, and and they have uh, taken over the word jihad for themselves and the media has given them they are they should be called fasadis obviously a bandit having a religion to somehow consecrate uh, their actions they will use the word jihad they are fasadi people they are people who are uh, one no good they are bandits and uh, that is what they are and uh, and various uh, actors are now trying to use them as uh, mercenaries uh, so so that is uh, the real character and nature of these uh, bandits whether it is isis or others um, the uh, other uh, thing is that you also find far right extremist groups in ukraine those who were earlier uh, uh, had putin as their as their idol because he Uh, stood up for christian values and spoke against the so called homosexual media but now you find far right extremist groups uh, joining the azov azov brigade in uh, in ukraine and america be, uh, overlooking that fact and, and and the people who are fighting russia uh, they are also far right extremist nazi groups uh, so so there is this normalization which is happening which is completely um, to my mind unacceptable how could you have far right extremist groups whether they are in america or whether they are jihadis here uh, uh, to be uh, so easily they are operating in these areas uh, and having their own territorial control and obviously these uh, these uh, uh, um, operators will then have their say in the new dispensation which will come in ukraine or other places uh, and this is a very uh, disconcerting thing the other problem is that america having left afghanistan uh the other powers think that nobody will now try to enter afghanistan uh, because if america was not successful why would any other major power uh, come and take over afghanistan so in the absence of that the taliban will become bolder the more it consolidates it becomes like uh, something uh, i find it a more disturbing development than the coming of iran as an islamist power in 79 uh there was a major setback to global jihadism with isis being wiped out that and we found that phase from 2019 to 2021 a major decline in terrorist uh, activities once taliban came to power suddenly the jihadist uh, morale increased worldwide and you find more of this literature coming online and you you will find that more of these activities will only proliferate uh the more taliban consolidates itself and the taliban 2.0 is perhaps a, a smarter cookie than the 1990s uh, taliban they they uh they have two face uh, they have three faces they have they know diplomacy much better now they can present themselves as if uh, they are a normal functioning government although they could have these other operators like ttps uh, some people even say isk has elements of the haqqani network uh, shahab al muhajir who is the leader of uh, uh, isk was a former commander of the haqqani network so uh, people from ttp keep moving into isk and and uh, what not so uh, there would be other organizations uh, and taliban has not renounced either jihadism or islamism it just says that it will not allow anybody to carry out uh, or plan attacks from its soil now this is a very ambivalent kind of a statement so so if we allow these players to keep operating we don't know what we are going to see in future uh, 
it is just like uh, once the muj uh, mujahideen had come uh, uh, and they were operating in afghanistan after the soviet union had withdrawn and then we saw taliban coming up and and a lot of uh, human rights atrocities happening in afghanistan leading up to the 911 attacks so just as america is now looking towards ukraine or maybe taiwan or other places this area has become the new black hole of of terror and this is a very dangerous development uh, one final question uh, dr rashid and pakistan the the other black hole in the region as far as extremism and radicalism goes uh, general zia in his bid to islamize the whole country Yeah, updated the blasphemy laws in 19 between the 1977 78 when he came to power and 1980 and we see tehreek-e labaik pakistan virtually acting as virtual state at times and holding the state to ransom so do you see that one of the main reasons behind this rise in extremism in pakistan was the updating or the modification of the blasphemy laws by general zia yes i think uh, this whole idea to islamize pakistan Pakistan has always been in this trouble of trying to find an identity for itself. It was uh, basically an anti-secular, anti-India uh, ideology. So you cannot have any positive identity by having just a. It was more of a negative identity, which it still has. And so, uh, and the fact is that Islam, like every other religion, is only a spiritual faith. it uh, does not have any political model there is no arth shastra in islam it does not tell you whether it should be a tribal egalitarian society as the early caliphs or whether it should be a feudal uh, a, a kingship uh, which the dynastical order which came after that or even the so called maududi which is a both theo democratic and uh, to some extent borrows something from modernism although it opposes it so there is no clear frame of what is an islamic system of governance so uh, pakistan has been in this uh, great confusion about itself and the blasphemy laws and the so called hudud laws which the islamic laws which tried to bring in uh, because uh, islam uh, uh, is not uh, such a kind of a straight jacketed religion which gives you answers to every problem the way uh, uh the islamists try to show it is more of a spiritual discipline uh and so they, the when you try to politicize a religion you try to completely uh get everything wrong about it and so this straight jacket which they try to create in that blasphemy laws became part of that and they have uh, not been able to actually uh, formally convict many but many people have been lynched and killed and vigilantism has started uh and about a uh, hundred uh, odd people have been uh, victims of this it has also become a way of trying to uh, subjugate the minorities in the country and continue human rights violations in that country if you look at islam uh, the prophet himself uh, never cursed anybody uh, although he had very strong opponents and islam itself is a propagating religion it, if you are going to propagate and still have blasphemy how could you propagate so blasphemy laws were never there in the time of the prophet even after that during the first umayyad empire uh, which was not a very particularly islamic kind of an empire uh, yet there was no blasphemy law even in the umayyad period uh, it was only in the abbasid period about 200 to 250 years after the prophet that blasphemy laws were imposed by the state the abbasid empire to basically subjugate the dissidents and try to trap them in some kind of a Uh, a legal way so that uh, they could blame someone for committing blasphemy and and subjugate that uh, that movement so there has to be some rethink when it comes to uh, these laws and uh, and i think uh, it is high time and even if you uh, conform to some of the laws which uh, which pakistan and other countries uh, of blasphemy you cannot have vigilantism you cannot just go and lynch anybody uh if it, at all if there is some case the, it has to go to a court and there has to be some legal proceeding it's a complete uh, uh uh ignorance and mayhem out there and it is high time the muslim community take this thing very seriously
Thank you, Dr. Rashid. And I'm sure that I, mean, I hope that people listen to your conversation, the insights you've given on Islam and how this politicization of religion will always virtually lead to vigilantism. And in any country, any civilized country, this just cannot happen. And on that, this note, I would like to thank you for the time you have given us. Thank you. Jai Hind and Namaskar. Jai Hind. Namaskar. Salam. Jai Hind.